Hey, good morning. Oh, let me turn this light off. If I turn this light off, I think my glasses don't glare as much there. Maybe that's a little bit better. Good morning. Welcome back to Create, Share, Inspire podcast. This is episode 676 and we are live in Southwest Florida in my studio. One more day in the studio. We'll probably go back outside next week. Oh, I don't know. We'll see. Hi, Joe. Good morning. If you're joining me live, please say hello. Hi, Lisa. Kiran Jeet. Hi, Sharon. Hi, Rita. Good morning. Happy Friday. Hi, Pamela and Julia. Good morning, Grace and Judy, Constance, Kathy. Thanks for joining me live, everybody. If you are joining me live, please say hello. Uh, let me know if you're crafting. Let me know if you have questions for me. Hi, Christine. If you end up watching the recorded version, which I know most people do, please also feel welcome to comment. Hi, Linda and Lorraine and uh, Kiran Jeet, Constance. Thanks for joining live, everybody. Um, what was I saying? <laughs> hi, Carrie. Hi, Thea. <laughs> hi, Jill. Hi, Susie. Oh, only 108 today for you. How nice. <laughs> hi, Marsha. So a few things that I wanted to talk about today, which I think you're going to enjoy, but we'll wait a few minutes for people to arrive from pre-chat and notifications and all the different ways that people join live. And like I said, if you end up watching the recorded version, that's wonderful too. And if you have questions, please always feel welcome to leave them in the comments. Also, if you watch the live and think about the uh, podcast later in the day and go, wait a second, I have a question now. Always feel welcome to come back. You can rewatch it if you want. You can also, um, if you have questions later on about anything that we talked about, please come back and ask. Always feel welcome. Uh, what was I saying? Oh, and so the view that already recognized, I'm wearing the Bianca top today, which is a knitting pattern. And I'm going to talk extensively about the differences and similarities between the Giselle crochet pattern and the Bianca knitting pattern and how you can mix and match different elements of them together as well. Uh, if you are interested in the Bianca pattern, I've already linked the pattern and the yarn in the video description as well as the comments. It is a knitting pattern download on my website in lots of sizes. It has video tutorials as well and you can uh, it features be so sporty bling yarn which is sport weight yarn that is has a thread of pure silver applied right into the yarn you can probably see the little bit of shimmer when i come closer anyway so to start the conversation i wanted to go back to some of the results from the survey that i uh, put out last week you might remember that i had a small two-minute survey that I asked you to fill out to ask what you like on the new website. And, you know, when you ask open-ended questions like at the end of the survey, what else would you like? Um, people took the opportunity to just make whatever requests that they had. It wasn't, they were, there were a lot of requests that really um, had nothing specifically do, to do with what I was asking about, but what they would like more from my brand or whatever. So one of the things that came up quite a few times in there is I'd really like to see more patterns that I can wear over leggings. And I, it came up quite a few times. And it made me realize that um, it's not really translating well the way I'm styling uh, patterns when I wear them over skinny jeans or mini skirts or whatever I'm doing and the thing is when I say to wear these flowy tops over a fitted silhouette underneath that means anything <laughs> that means skinny jeans like I wear or leggings uh, a fitted silhouette underneath when I say it specifically that way I say a fitted silhouette I mean leggings or skinny jeans my personal comfort level is to most of the time wear skinny jeans over leggings but it doesn't mean that you couldn't do that too so i don't, i'm sorry that that's not translating well in the way that i've been showing it and describing it so 
without further ado, I wanted to show you that I, although I've shown you how to wear the Bianca top as a dress and as a lengthy tunic and as a top over jeans and a skirt, I think, I wanted to show you that I'm wearing it over leggings today. Ah, can I even get tall enough to show you? Yeah, you can tell I have leggings on. So instead of wearing it over skinny jeans or a mini skirt or a fitted dress like I've shown you, I'm wearing it today over leggings and a tank top, right? You can tell, hopefully. And you could definitely wear it just loose and flowy like that over leggings and a tank top. I, I just, I need to put on platforms to get a little higher. So hopefully you can see that. But then I'm taking a stretchy belt because this is what I like to do. You don't have to do this. You could leave it long and flowy. It's super cute that way. And then I'm blousing up the top over the belt. I love that look. I love wearing a belt over a flowy top and blousing it up like that. But whether you like leggings or skinny jeans, it ultimately it's the same style, right? It's just a comfort level of which style, which style of tight leg pant you like to wear. So don't be put off by watching me in skinny jeans um, styling these outfits because you could absolutely input leggings in there instead. My big issue with leggings, of course, is making sure that you have enough coverage to wear them right, but I feel the same way with skinny jeans because honestly, my belly's too big to see the front of skinny jeans. It's no different than in leggings, right? And if you feel uncomfortable with something tight on your butt without a layer going out, a top covering, that whole area. So it's the same rule that I would apply with leggings. So, um, so anytime you see me doing uh, styling with skinny jeans, please remember that leggings would be the same. Oh, Judy's posting a link to my leggings and my belt on there too. I buy this is the top, which I've already mentioned. Someone's just coming in now and asking again. So all of the links are available in the video description as well as the comments. And Judy is also adding live links to the live chat. How thoughtful is that? Thank you, Judy. I appreciate that. And I'm sure everybody else does too. So one of the things that I thought that would be fun to talk about today is how you can mix and match different elements of knitting patterns and crochet patterns together. And I'm going to bring my board over first to explain to you not only how you can modify this pattern from just this pattern, but how you can mix and match some of the elements of my other patterns if you already have those as well. So to start with, the Bianca top slash dress, and I'm sorry, the Bianca top slash dress and the Giselle top slash dress are actually the same a silhouette and construction style. And construction style. So let me show you on the board. Both of them start with a neck width. They're both sized patterns. So whatever size you're making, this applies to all the sizes in the pattern as well. So it starts with a narrow section across here or across here. And then within the stitch pattern, we grow the stitch pattern repeats, which grows the number of stitches and grows the width of the fabric in both this one and this one. They both have the same number of repeats at the beginning, but those repeats grow in size. So we are increasing within pattern in both of these tops. And what happens is it creates an A-line, right? So it creates this A-line, which means we can go from a narrow shoulder width, wider for bust, and then wider still for hips and for a dress. And that's what we, I did for both the Giselle in crochet and knit in the Bianca. The difference is I didn't put an edging on this one. I kept this one nice and simple. I went with a garter stitch, just simple hem here, which you could also get that same look on this one if you just went with a simple double crochet hem. You could definitely do that as well. Because they are both top down, you can choose how long or short you want them. So both of these I made a little on the longer side to be able to wear them as a mini skirt length if I wanted to for a beach cover up or a dress. 
but because they're both top down, it is extremely easy to adjust the length and make, you could make it a crop, either one of these a crop top, a waist length, a hip length, a tunic length, or a dress length. So either one could be made any, any kind of length that you want. But beyond that, they could have any kind of edging you want too. So whether you wanted to put an elaborate edging on, like with this top, or a simple edging, like on this one. But here's the really exciting part. What about mixing and matching the different edgings from different patterns that you already have in your library, right? So what about adding the Giada edging to the Giselle top? Or adding the, if you're a knitter and a crocheter, what about adding the Giada edging to the Bianca? Or adding the Giselle edging to the Bianca? What if you made Bianca shorter? What if you ended the body of the Bianca here? Wait, there's more. <laughs> what if you went with one of the other knitted edgings that we've done? edges like on the little three tape you could do that kind of edging you could mix and match any knit edging or any crochet edging on either of them i have a problem with connection here guys i'm not sure what's going on okay so if you are interested in mixing and matching these patterns there are a couple of tips and tricks to making sure that you get the right kind of there are uh, I'm sorry it's frustrating for you uh, there's really not much i can do uh it, it's still working on this end maybe you can leave and come back if you can watch the recorded version um don't know what else to say sorry is anybody watching or is everybody not having any trouble i mean i can end it if it's too much if it's too upsetting is anybody getting a decent connection Grace can hear me fine. Okay, some people are fine. All right, then I'm gonna keep talking. Okay, so, <laughs> thanks Thea. Um, so, so let's say you want to take one pattern and add a different edging to it. So, we come back to gauge, on, fortunately slash unfortunately. I know some people don't like to hear that word, but I re here's the reason why I wanna talk about it so much. I feel like anything that is an unknown has fear attached to it, right? And the more familiar you become with the subject and the more you understand the importance of a subject, the less fearful it becomes and the more real it becomes and the more understandable all of the, re all of the reasons are for using it, right? So we're gonna talk about gauge again. Someone said the G word, that's funny. <laughs> God, it doesn't have any other connotations for the letter G. Anyway, so let's say this could be either one of these, right? And let's say you were going to, you could mix and match knitting or crochet. You can mix and match any edging. Uh, it does not matter. What matters is gauge and stitch repeat in the previous, or no, what matters is stitch repeat in the new pattern, the new pattern you're going to add, so the edging, and the actual width of the existing piece. So this is also how how we apply this is also how we apply rules to crochet on fabric or knitting on fabric. So let's say that this is 20 inches long. I'm going to try to keep the math nice and easy for this, okay? So let's say and this is assuming that you have already blocked this and you know what this blocked measurement is very important because when you're adding a new pattern onto it if you don't have the gauge right what will happen is once you do block it you'll have puckering and it won't look pretty so you want to make sure that you're comparing apples to apples so if this is 20 inches wide after blocking and you want to add a stitch pattern that's unrelated to this pattern for an edging you're going to want to do a gauge swatch per inch and also multiple. So I'm just going to throw something out there. Uh, let's see. So I'm pretty sure one of these is, I can't remember. I, I, it might be a 21 stitch repeat on here, but let's call it a 20 stitch repeat just to make it an even number, okay? So let's say our edging Uh, or let's even take a simpler one. The edging is 10 stitch repeat 
and it's five stitches for one inch, okay? We're gonna do this in inches. I, I always share my patterns in inches and centimeters so that no matter what type of measuring system you use at home, it's all covered in my patterns. But for simplicity here, I'm just gonna pick one and go with these, convert these numbers if we wanted to. Okay, so we've got 20 inches wide, and the edging that we want to apply to this, and remember, this could be this could be a dress that you bought at the store and you want to do crochet and edging. This could be a knit uh, project and you want to add crochet. This could be crochet and you want to add knitting to it. It does not matter. You can add anything to anything. So if there's one thing that you can take from this podcast today, there are no limits. You can mix and match anything together as long as you understand the math to make it look beautiful. So isn't that awesome just to start with? So okay, our edging is 10 stitch repeat. And we're getting five stitches to the inch. So for 20 inches, we're going to have 20 times five. We're going to need 100 stitches times five equals 100. We get five stitches to one inch and we've got 20 inches. So it's 20 times five equals 100 stitches. Okay, so we've got 100 stitches to eat to fill up this 20 inch here. Now, if you're having trouble figuring out how to evenly space 100 or 100 stitches across there, that's when it comes handy to have your stitch markers. Where are my stitch markers? I have some in here stitch markers, and this is where you would use stitch markers in a very similar fashion to the way I tell you to pin out your uh, block pieces. Remember we talk about midpoints a lot, right? So this is where you would add stitch markers at several midpoints to make sure that you space it evenly across. So what do I mean by that? Let's use this. So let's, where I'm gonna make a little X where I would put a stitch marker to give myself some guides, right? So if this is where your first stitch is, and this is where 100 stitches, you would want to find the midpoint. So the midpoint of 20 inches is 10 inches. We'd put a, we put a pin there, and that would mark where we have to get to 50 stitches. You want to make sure you when you get to the midpoint. But even evenly spacing 50 stitches over 10 inches, that might be a little hard to keep uh, on base for. So what if we put a midpoint stitch marker in between each of those spots too? So we could put a pin of stitch marker here and here, and that would tell us that you have to have 25 stitches to here, 25 to here, 25 to here, and 25 to here, which would bring you to 25, 50, 75, and 100. Isn't that a nice easy way to get all of your stitches smoothed across? Let me see if there's any questions before I move on, because well, this is how I this is how I sew pieces together, and this is how I evenly space stitches across an edge when uh, when I need to evenly space a certain number of stitches across a longer section. It always helps to have midpoints. Midpoints will always keep you on pace, whether it's for sewing, blocking, or crocheting or knitting along an edge. This is really, really helpful and gives you precise, even, perfect stitches every time. So that once you work your stitches across that row, as long as you get the number of stitches you need that is a multiple of your stitch pattern. So what do I mean by a multiple? So whatever your total stitches are, total stitches divided by stitch repeat equals number of repeat. I hope I'm writing big enough that you can see. Can you read the letters? I mean, I'm not what I'm writing it. Can you, is it big enough for you to read? You know, me and my glasses, I have no idea. <laughs> can you read that? If not, I'll say it again. Total number of stitches divided by stitch repeat equals your number of repeats. So let's do this particular, let's plug in the numbers. So our total stitches is 100. Our, our number of stitches per repeat is 10. So 100 divided by 10 gives us 10 repeats of the pattern. Well, hot diggity dog, that turned out perfect, but we do not live in a perfect world, unfortunately. <laughs> 
including in knitting and crochet. So here's what happened. Let's, let's plug in numbers where the repeat doesn't work. And this is where the math gets a little more complicated. Um, all right, well, that's why I keep saying it, Natalie. Um, I really can't get it too much closer. I could try a little bit, maybe. But then it's going to be lower, too. That's as good as I can do. Okay, that's as close as I can get it today. Okay, so let's say that your edging was... Let's, oh, let's start again. So let's say the edging is seven, is a seven stitch repeat. Okay, let's say the edging is a seven stitch repeat instead of a 10 stitch repeat. So we're gonna go back to our formula here for total stitches. Total stitches is 100 divided by a seven stitch repeat. And I'm gonna need my calculator for that. But this is, this is really good stuff. Stay with me if you can. So 100 divided by seven is 14.28, whatever. So we're not done here. So we're gonna get, if we use this, we'll get 14 repeats and we've got a little extra. So we'll lead a couple, of re, or a couple of stitches along here to make this work out. So what I'm doing is multiply that seven by 14 to find out what the perfect number is. 14 times seven. So it takes so it takes 98 stitches to give us 14 repeats of a seven stitch repeat. It's getting harder to write down there. Okay, so if we have 100 stitches across here and a 98 stitches will give us a perfect set of 14 repeats of a seven stitch of a seven stitch repeat stitch count, then you have a choice of either putting in two less stitches across here and making it 98 stitches or adding what would be uh, or increasing by five more stitches across there and giving it 105 because then it would so it's either seven times 14 equals 98 or eight times 14 equals 105 okay so either way you're going to get a perfect number of stitches to be able to work your edging but you have to make a little bit of adjustment along here. So based on what's the application here? If you're doing something that you want to ruffle, it's fine at growing up. If you want it, if you're already making a ruffle, what's five more stitches? If you're doing the type of edging that needs to really be more flat and not too ruffly, you might go down and do two less stitches here instead of adding five more. Can you see the difference there? Um, I'm gonna wait and see if anybody has anything to say about that because this is really important and um, hopefully it's not too mathy because I really think that this is something that anybody can do, but it's about making those choices based on the application of the edging. What are you going to do? Do I have the tutorial for the ruffles? Um, what ruffle are you talking about, Natalie? If you're talking about any of the patterns that you see here, all of these patterns are available on my website. All of the knitting and crochet. So if you could tell me which one specifically you're asking about, I can tell you which pattern, it, what the pattern is called. Oh, Thea, not very mathy, and this, uh, and this um, makes sense to you. Wonderful. Grace says it makes sense. Grace, you are mathy, but that's, <laughs> that's wonderful. I'm glad it's informative. And it, what the thing is, to share these types of tidbits with you, I feel like it just gives you more reasons to be empowered and have the ability to do more things on your own and be more creative and be more adventurous, right? You could apply this to dinner napkins or a tablecloth or uh, a top in your closet You could, or a dress in your closet. You can apply this to anything. Crochet. But what if you wanted to take knit piece and add a crochet edging, or take a crochet piece and add a knit edging? This applies to anything: a sewing project, a store-bought project, a knit project, a crochet project. If you want to add an embellishment of knitting and crochet onto any of them, this applies to everything. I think that's exciting. 
yeah, if you're having trouble with buffering, you can always come back and watch the replay when it's uh, a recording. Great, Christine's doing this already. Wonderful. Linda has always wanted to do this and maybe now you will. That's wonderful. Thank you for letting me know. Yeah, it's good stuff. This is, it's not as difficult as you may have thought. It's definitely easier than you may have thought. It's just about making the numbers fit. And when it comes, when the numbers don't fit, it's about figuring out which way to go. Do you go up or go down based on the application? So if it, you want something to ruffle, round up. If you don't want it to be as roughly, then you round down. And when the numbers work out perfectly, then you're totally fine. <laughs> Um, Barbara, I can't read that. Let's see. I'm guessing that a test swatch that is blocked is when you would use this math. It, this is all based, it all has to be based on block swatches because we're making things that go on the washing machine, right? We're, ma we're making things that need to uh, get wet. So whether you're making napkins, tablecloths, um, clothing, everything needs to be washed at some point and how fiber is affected by water is what your final gauge is. Oh good, Natalie found what she was looking for. Yeah, go ahead and rewatch it, Sharon. That's great. And maybe make up your own story problem too. So if you think of an edge of a piece and you think of an edging you want to use, you can make up your own problem and see if you can fix it based on these formulas too. Yes, you can absolutely watch the video again. Absolutely. And if you have questions from there, you can leave them in the comments as well. But think about it. For all the patterns that you already have, you have components in different patterns that you can now, it actually brings more value to your existing pattern base, right? So you have edgings in certain patterns and you have silhouettes in other patterns and now with knowing this type of math you can have your patterns become more patterns right i think that's exciting you can always take elements from different patterns and mix them together once you understand this type of um this type of technique well wonderful Yes, I have lots of information on blocking Carmen. You can find videos here on my YouTube channel. And I will be doing more this fall. Well, I'm glad this was helpful and informative to some of you, and I hope that you uh, have the uh, urge to maybe try it out this weekend. And if you do, I'd also love you to come back and leave a comment and let me know how it worked for you. And if you want to share photos of how it worked for you, you can share them in my Create, Share, and Fire group on Facebook. And what else? Or you can email me or email Judy uh, at judi at kristenomdahl.com, and we can see your photos there as well. If you uh, like this podcast, please give it a thumbs up. If you haven't already subscribed to the channel, please click the red button. I would love to have you here more often. If you... Uh, have any other questions, always feel welcome to leave them in the comments. We're always here to help. Let us make time to create, share, and inspire today and every day. Have a wonderful day, everybody, and a great weekend, and I'll see you same time, same place, Monday morning. Bye-bye.